I wonder how often, if they had recorded the, my first little bit with all righty then, how many times I say, <laughs> all righty then. You know where I got that from, don't you? I'll never tell. We are in the book of Colossians. We are in chapter 2, and we have begun to cover the first three verses. And what the Lord is <clears throat> speaking to us is not great, deep truths. He is trying to uh, set forth um, a reality of his son that is not... Um, just contained in uh, teaching or good teaching or excellent teaching or the best teaching, but rather him as a person, to know him, uh, not just know him the Savior, but to know that which, uh, if you will, what makes him tick, what, why he's in this in the first place, to know the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And uh, we found in um, chapter 1, the latter part there, that Paul begins to set forth the thing that he believes that this is all about. And um, he starts talking about a mystery that's been hid from generations and before the foundation of the world. Well, if it is before the foundation of the world, then it is something that's in God's heart. You have to... You have to acknowledge that. You can't just say, oh, this is ancient truth. You know what I mean? Somehow this goes back a long way. Forget how long it's been, how you know, many years it's been hid. It's been hidden in his heart wishing to reveal it. That's important to him. It may not be so important. We go, oh, praise God. I got a revelation of Christ, you know, but do you have a revelation of the Son revealed in you that is the one that the Father intended? And it's funny that he talks about that, but from the very beginning also there was this other word that's been used from the, from the very beginning to Romans to... You know, and that word is image, that we would be in his image, not just, see, that, that word gives some things away. It's, it is, it's not just that we would have Christ. Okay, I have Christ. I've got Jesus in me. Every, every Christian will say that. I've got, I've got Jesus in me. You know, well, where is he at? Well, he's, you know, I think he's somewhere over here, you know, because um, he's in my heart, and he's not in it's not in your organ, your heart organ. Um, but there is an image of him that God the Father wants. Um, flashing back to the Caesars and the coins, they would stamp their, their image on the coin. Well, he wants to put his image into us. He, yes, that image is the Son, but, but he's using that language like an, in addition to having my son, I want his image in you. Is that, you know, I mean, I know, we, I know that we know these words. You know, I know that we're familiar with them. But I'm feeling that the, that the Spirit of God is trying to lift us out of I know into the I am and... and and to make that real as life in us. So Paul sets that forth, and he, he, he describes that mystery as um, Christ in you. That's the hope. Okay, That's the real hope. Okay, well, we, again, well, we quote that one, and we know that one. Well, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But is that the real hope? Is that your real hope? It, I know it's the Father's real hope, hid from, you know, for all this time, and is it a hope that we desire will become manifest reality as life? Not that we know all these scriptures. I think, 
I personally feel like knowing all these scriptures and always teaching and bantering them around can actually be negative for us. Not always a good thing. Because familiarity breeds contempt. I mean, we get familiar with it, so we think, okay, I've got this because I've heard this uh, 1,500 times since I've been at New Creation. So I must have it because I've heard it. Um, I'm not the judge of that. The father who had this in his heart from before the foundation of the world, he's the one who will judge based on his son. And he's not based, he's not, um, <clears throat> in that sense, when he makes a judgment, he's looking, is that my son or not my son? Not is that my son's, is that not my, the teaching of my son? or not the teaching of my son. Um, those come into play somewhat under certain circumstances as you go through Paul's teaching, but um, they only come into play because we've dropped it down to teaching. And honestly, Colossians really does deal with this subject. It's really dealing with this. So he presents that and then he makes it clear in the last verse that this isn't a teaching, this is the very thing, this is the empowering energy by which I do all that I do. Christ in me. Okay. So, then we, we began in the last class in chapter 2, and um, we saw that Paul was having a great conflict, and, you know, I... I it made me want to understand that conflict. It made me want to, uh, what, you know, what is it? Are you being persecuted? Uh, is, you know, are you going through something, Paul? Are you having a hard time? What, what is it? You know, and, uh, and he begins to talk about that their hearts would come in to the acknowledgement of the mystery, which is Christ in me. Only a few verses up, except it's, it's miles away to us because it's in chapter 1 and now we're in chapter 2. We leave chapter 1, which is only, well, it's the, you know, the great conflict is verse 1 of chapter 2. Verse 29, I think, is the last one of that one, and that's where he's talking about Christ being that power that works, that life that works within him. So it's not, it hasn't even got a few broken scriptures in between, it's literally the next line of that Christ in you uh, teaching, and this is what I preach, uh, this is also what works in me. I'm in great conflict concerning you guys. You see that? Bang, 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 bang. No broken order there. And um, so, you know, I, I want to know, you know, uh, I want to know why, what, what are you going through in relationship to this? And, and it is, um, he talks about knowledge, but remember he's talking to the Gnostics. And so he has to talk about knowledge because that's their big deal. Knowing all kind of stuff, you know, deep stuff, great stuff, impressive, impressive. Oh, that we could impress the masses with what we know. But the father's not impressed. He's looking for the real son, the real one. So he says, yeah, this is fine. It begins with that, but then it says, but it all must come down to the, uh, um, the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Christ. You start acknowledging this as being what it's all about. And... Um, um, and then verse 3, he just flat out says it, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So to the Gnostics, they're wanting all of these great teachings hid within them, if you will. Not really hid because they fully intend to put them out there so everyone will be impressed. Um, but, but Paul knows that this reality is in a person, that, that it's not subjects, it's not uh, studious uh, academic 
pursuit at all. It is a heart pursuit for the one that God loves, the son of his love, the son of his love. Bless you. That's a, a blessing. I sent a blessing. Okay. Um, so, uh, so then the very next verse, um, and this I say, lest any man, now this is coming right after, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's saying, he's saying, uh, you know, I don't want to mess up this glorious thing here, but he's saying that, that we've made all of this something apart from Christ as if he's the giver of it to us to make us something. And Paul is about to address that in a real dramatic way. He's going to address it in a real dramatic way so that we can understand. So he's talking, in whom are hid all the, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. He's, point, he's just flat out said, this is it. He is it. And if you want those things, you can only gain them by gaining him. There must be an increase of Christ. It's not about an increase of you. Um, so he uses the word beguile you and entice you. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So he is talking about beguiling, that there's apparently a beguiling going on. Um, I, I just wrote a sentence here. The beguiling has to do with falling for just getting the wisdom and not pursuing the person. You've been beguiled. No, I'm not beguiled. You know, remember the Jews? You know, we're Abraham's children, you know. And we respond that way. I'm not beguiled. I, I, know stuff, I know stuff you don't even know, Randy. <laughs> Praise God. All I want to know is, a, is one thing have I desired. That will I seek after. Oh, that almost sounds like scripture, doesn't it? <laughs> one thing have I desired. That will I seek after. And you're not going to get that except in the house of the Lord which is his body, which is him, which is the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. All right, so, um, so he says, he's, he's talking to them, and he's saying, I, the way that you received Christ from us is the way you need to be walking. He didn't say is the way you need to be teaching. He's not saying they're teaching off. The teaching is not off. You do understand that, right? The teaching is not off. It's, but it's off the mark because the mark is him. It misses him. And this is, this is what he's going to keep saying over and over in this, in this second chapter and really in the third chapter also. Um, but, he's saying, but he's talking about a walk. And that walk happens by life. You, you don't walk by teaching. You know, teaching doesn't make you walk. Life makes you walk. You know. But, you know, if we've made the Holy Grail just the teaching, even, even if it is more correct than anything I could ever hope to reach, have we missed the one that we should be, our hearts should be drawn to, not our hungering academic mind, you know, our, our spiritual mind, if you will, I'm say it like that. You know, I've got to know this and I've got to have that and i got, can't you be content with him and as you're gaining him, as there's an increase of him, don't you think there'll be an increase of that which is, out of him yes you know so so when you go to the scriptures you go to the scriptures saying i want to see life i want to be transformed i want your image at work in me i want to be able to walk something out not 
you know, my, my stepfather, he wasn't a godly man at all until, until I led him to the Lord just before he passed away. But he used to say to me after I got saved and I'd come to the house and, uh, and uh, you know, he knew I was saved now. And he said, and I'd start to say something about the Lord. And he said, don't talk the talk until you can walk the walk. And I remember going, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, I, I want this to be life. I want it because, you know, you can, I, I've, I learned very early on that um, with him, he's not open to talking, but he was open to life. And the more I poured Jesus, the life of Jesus on him, the more he melted until one day he called me up and asked me to come, Randy, come share the Jesus you know. He said, I hope you understand what I said. <laughs> I want the Jesus you know. And I said, I understand exactly what you're saying. And uh, so, <clears throat> you know, then when, when life happens like that, you can't take any credit. Hello? Well, that hurts my widow feelings. I want some glory. <laughs> you got some, you're getting a lot of glory going on there. <clears throat> um, so, um, beguiling. The first sin was the result of beguiling, uh, enticing words. Uh, you're, you're familiar with Genesis 3, right? Let's turn there. We'll look at this. <clears throat> Genesis 3, 1 through 4. <clears throat> now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's knowing. Ye shall be as God's knowing, good and evil. Oh, you'll know it, but it'll. Um, so, as I was meditating on these verses, because I felt like the Lord sent me there based on the words beguiling and, and um, enticing words, he reminded me of a New Testament scripture that seems, by, by the way that it's written, is the New Testament application of that story in Genesis 3. All right. So turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse uh, 2 through 4, we'll start there. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Okay, so interestingly enough, Eve had just sort of come on the scene, and the enemy was already ready to turn her as much as he could. <clears throat> And then verse 3, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through the sub to, I don't know, I know I always mispronounce this word. Subtlety is the way I usually go with. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Okay, so he is literally going back to Genesis 3. And I think, uh, this is my opinion, but I think he is explaining 
Genesis 3, not in light of history or in light of Bible teaching, but in light of Christ and in light of a true application by life so that we would understand what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened, what's happening with us if we're not in tune to this. So he goes on to say, verse 4, for if he that cometh preacheth, this is interesting. I mean, he's saying like, Eve was beguiled, and he used that word in Colossians, through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, look where he is taking this. He's taking it right back to where we're at in Colossians. He's taking it right back to that same place, and that is that, um, you know, uh, Eve... These uh, um, uh, Gnostics, uh, they're, they're gaining knowledge. They're gaining something that makes them something. As gods, knowing something, having more wisdom than you did before. So he's dealing with that over in Colossians. He's dealing with that right here, too. And he's saying, look, this is a pattern, and this is the very thing that trips people up. Uh, and then he starts saying, and if anybody else comes, now you know he said that in Galatians too, right? Okay, so if anybody else comes preaching another Jesus. All right, now here's the thing that you we've said before, but I think you need to grasp. What? What is it that he is referring to as another Jesus? What is it? it is it a whole nother, um, like, let's just say, like the prosperity gospel? Is that what he's referring to? You're preaching another Jesus. Is that what he's talking about? No, he doesn't even know anything about the kind of stuff we preach today. <laughs> you know, he's not going, oh, no, no. He knows that these people have been being fed because he's been one of the main ones feeding all these people in all these churches. Christ in him crucified. The life of Christ in you. The hope of glory. And so he's addressing truth. And we'll go back, you know, to Colossians. He's addressing truth in contrast to what they're doing, which is truths. But it's all Christ-centered truths. All right. Can I say something about Christ-centered? <laughs> well, y'all allow me to do this. We're, we talk about being Christ-centered and everything, but it's not about being Christ-centered. It's about it being Christ. Okay? I mean, it is. Literally, Christ is supposed to be that. I have espoused you to one. That's what I joined you to. That's what this is about. And you're going off on learning all kind of other stuff, like Eve, and you're leaving him, and now you got all kind of other stuff going on in you, and it's not him. Okay? What, what did Eve have going off in her? Well, on one front, really nothing. I mean, the devil didn't say, I'm going to implant a lot of stuff in you. Boo! You know, like, here's a... 180 billion trig, you know, terabyte. No. Just she ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She turned from, as it were, we'll just say it like this, because this is talking about he's trying to, Paul's like, I'm trying to get you back to him, to the one. Do you see that? I'm trying to get you back to don't be like her in that sense. Don't get beguiled. Stay with the one. Stay with the one. And if anybody teaches anything else, okay, uh, but he doesn't say anything else, see? He says another Jesus, okay? He, the definition of what he calls another Jesus, folks, 
is not some other teaching that's doctrines that are different from new creation or anybody else's. He's talking about the very teaching of Christ and him crucified becoming just knowing good and evil, knowing stuff, being like God's, becoming something, uh, self-improvement uh, instead of his increase in us. His increase in us. Christ in you. That's an increase of him in us. Amen? That's the, the mind behind that. See, we say the mind behind that is that God wants to, wants to save us, and he just decided to put Jesus in us, in us too. So he's going to save us from hell, and, and he's going to, you know, this and that. Or, or we could even take it further and say uh, Christ is in us never really um, um, being dead. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you. Um, never really being dead to those things because in a certain sense, and you know, I'll just say it like this, when, when you get married, like when, like when Deb and I got married, her name changed, her life changed, a lot of the things that she liked, she didn't like anymore. Um, she, you know, things that I liked that she probably wasn't into that much, you know, she goes, no, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, it's like a death to certain things in your life. Well, that's just a dumb little shadow compared to what it's supposed to be with Christ. There's supposed to be a total flushing of, <laughs> of us. And the fullness that is him dwelling in what he would call gladly his temple. Or his wife, the wife of the lamb. Or whatever. So that there would be in his heart, this is what I want. This is my desire. And she would be able to say back. Because see, that was his desire from the beginning. That's what, folks, that's what Eve came out of. It's not good that man be alone. He's talking about himself. So... He opens Adam's side and he brings out a rib and he forms her and it's a per perfect picture of him going into death to bring forth her, you know? And so there's, you know, there's a, a, uh, a thing that's in his heart where he says, this is, this is what I want. This is part of the mystery. And if you don't believe that, read Ephesians 5. Where it brings up the word mystery again, but it says, I'm, but I'm speaking of Christ in the church. This is a great mystery, but I'm speaking about Christ in the church, not you people getting together. You know, you see that? L living reality, you know. You know, I don't want to live as a shadow. I don't want to live, I, I don't want to live with a, as a shadow with my wife. I don't want to live as a shadow with Jesus, you know. I want the full sun shining so there's no shadows that I'm giving off. I want him to be straight over the top of me and shining down so there's no shadows going on. It's just sun basking in the sun, you know. So uh, with us, it can be, you know, it can be, you know, we can say, you know, Lord, I want you and I want you know, I want to be with you, and I want to be what's in your heart for me to be, and stuff like that. But it's, it's nothing, it's nothing on the same degree that he desired when he started this whole thing over that. You know. It's just nothing. It's just nothing. Can I say this? We need to kick it up a little bit, <laughs> you know. We need to kick it up some more yeah. and keep kicking it up and keep saying, Lord, Lord, I don't even know, Lord. You just pray like this. I don't even know. I wouldn't know how to get there. But you know how to get me there. And you started this and you brought me along up to this point. And I heard somewhere that he that hath begun a good work in me will finish it. So I'm kind of looking to you.
you know? And it's, it's, see, that's real stuff. That's not religion. And it's like, I don't really care about anything else. What about your ministry? You care about your ministry. No, if my ministry isn't that which flows out of that same life and spirit, then it's not even it's not even worthy to be called a ministry. You know, it's just us. It's just another version of us. You know, well, here's the here's what I'm interested in. I like doing this area. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't like crosses. <laughs> you know, I like this area. You know, so. So I wrote down relation according to the mystery, not according to religion. So, so we're, I'm, I keep wanting to come back to this theme that Paul's on here in Colossians. What he would call religion, if, if this is the word he would use in this context that he's talking about here, he would call knowing the extreme depths of the truth of the Bible concerning Christ and him crucified, but not living, him living that through us. Us living still as separate, but with all of his notes. <laughs> you kind of see what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, well, I got all of his notes and they're good. You know, but we're living separate. I have espoused you to the one. That's what Paul said. It's as simple, as straightforward as anyone can be. Don't you understand? I'm taking this seriously. I can see him seeing this. I'm taking this seriously. I remember what happened there with Eve, and I'm stepping in here, and I'm espousing you to him, not me, not to my teaching, not to the, my revelation. Right? But to him. So, so, you know, all the terminology can be the same. All the same scriptures be quoted. But if there's not deep within us, you know, if deep isn't calling to deep, you know, and going, you know, I want my depth to be, oh, the depth of the glory of him. Oh, the, the length and the breadth and the height and the depth. And I love what he says. His ways are past finding out. See, you cannot find them out. You can study everybody's book that ever wrote on the revelation of Christ and memorize it and have a photographic memory so you only have to go through them once and then it's all there. Dang. And then spout it and not that any of us have a photographic memory here but some might uh, not here but <clears throat> anyways I you know I could see how we could be extremely deceived or, or let me let me say it like this beguiled and we could be, actually be beguiled with enticing words because that's what happened to Eve, you know. You shall not surely die. Don't worry. You can stay Eve independent and uh, know all of this stuff. All you got to do is just eat this. All you got to do is, and see, he can put it away. He's not saying step away from the one to whom you've been espoused. The devil's not saying that to her. Because that might, you know, that might raise something within her. She might go, wait a minute. Are you a beguiler? <laughs> you know. But you can have this, and you can be something, and you can know stuff. And, you know, and God knows that, you know, I mean, it's like he's wanting you to live in death and not be with w what he has. But if you eat this, you can be like him in that way. Paul is freaking out with the people that he's, 
he's the one over it and going, uh, you know, don't you understand what just grabbing the truth and going, this is it right here and I can put it in a book and you can read it and we'll all have it, that this is the same pattern. It's taking us away from the one to whom we're joined to and that's an inward living joining where you can, the one you received, you can walk by. So, um, so I was thinking, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about there's, there has to be a desire to know in there that works, that opens the door to the enemy. And the desire is a desire to know uh, something other than Christ, to be satisfied with knowing something other than Christ. And when I say that again, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the way that Paul keeps using that term, but it is not Christ, but the body is Christ, but da da da, -da. you remember Colossians. Man, he's just, he's, he'll da 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 da, he'll build this subject up, and then he'll go, but it's not Christ. And then da da da, -da and this is what he does. And it's powerful if you understand that he is, uh, he is, um, he has great conflict. I was just looking for that particular thing. He, he's in great conflict over this. It's not, it is not an easy thing that he's going through. And again, if he, if he saw that the Genesis 3 account that the real of it because you know he's the same guy that saw the creation let there be light and all that over in 2nd Corinthians and he put it in a completely different context he put it in the context of of Christ not being revealed in me but out of me it does, that's what it's about Okay, so now he's using this story, and he's saying, this is all truth coming down upon us, upon whom the, the true meaning of this is meant to be known. Not stories. Oh, I know Bible stories. I know a lot of Bible stories. You want to hear one? They're really good. No, I don't. I want my story written with Christ. That's what I want more than anything else. I want this written into my story so that when I stand before the Lord, I don't start pointing to a Bible going, well, remember this Bible story? I knew that one real well. He points to how Christ was lived in me and that he knew my son. Depart from me. I never knew you. Or, you know, enter in to the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. You're one of those that brings joy to the Lord because of your relationship to him. So enter into all of it that's going on up here and now in our, in our hearts and our, in our relationships. So, um, we, we want to know something, but we want to know something to be something. That's, that's, that's Eve. That was the beguiling, you know. By pursuing, you know, by pursuing this one area, and if you give your full attention to it your whole life, you will, even in the bad times and in the good times, you will be successful. That's what they teach. You can get that in success seminars, okay? Um, okay, can we do that with Jesus? <laughs> just, just him, you know? You know, we're, I know with me, I mean, you know, I play music and I like, you know, drawing and I work with leather and I do all kind of stuff. It's crazy. I've got so many things going on that I have to wait for the moment when I feel moved to do something in that area. And it's like, uh, who was it? Somebody said to me a long time ago, they said, you know, Randy, if you just would focus on one of those things, you could be really successful. <laughs> and I'm kind of going, 
I never really thought about it being successful in any of these. <laughs> but the Lord, the Lord, that, I mean, for me and for some of you, that's never left me. That's never left me. The Lord is what my heart, where my heart is. You know, that's why I can't promote anything else but Him. Still learning, still wanting to stay in tune and in touch in the flow of his heart. Um, so I wrote down uh, signs of, being, of, of beguiling taking place, being moved from the truth to truths, all of them about the truth, but it's not the truth himself. It's about him as found in these truths. Uh, deny the word of God. What? I've never done that. I know. You don't deny the word of God. You accept the scriptures. Yeah. You're denying the very... Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. That's the beginning. That's where you comprehend what he is and begin to know him. Which... May I say, someday when I get a chance to share along those lines, just is nothing like what we think it is. Because we just go, well, he's this, here's, the, here's the scriptures, this is, this is the scriptures, and here's Jesus, and he's the word. In what way? Well, you know, he's the, he's the living version of this. Okay, that is so vague, I can't even tell you. Seriously. It's like, you don't, you, you really hadn't said anything, <laughs> you know. Um, the living word is that which was and is and is to come. It is, uh, I can't tell you. I can't, I can't speak of it anymore because I have been waiting for years now and the Holy Spirit, every time when I get to that point, he'll go, Arr. so. But we, I think that we can understand at least somewhat when we say uh, you have left the word, you deny the word as it were, or left the word the living word, and now you've embraced the scriptures. You accept the scriptures. Well, that's not so hard. The Pharisees did that. <laughs> but it, you know, it's, it's worse for us. If we, if we know all of the stuff we know all of the stuff, and none of it can get us up off of our bed or couch or whatever. None of us can move us to life by Christ, to, to uh, that pure selflessness, that pure being that is him, um, that loves to its own hurt and doesn't care about the hurt, doesn't get offended about the hurt, doesn't... Uh, um, in fact, gladly bears that if it takes it off of you. Gladly does that. And he did that for us when we were yet in sin. In other words, when we were enemies. Because we, we get, a, we'll do that, but if we find that their motivation is like they're still enemies against us, well, I can't do this because then it'll make them look to other people like they're the right ones and I'm serving the, what, you know, <laughs> Jesus' mind does not go there. You know, it does not go there. He doesn't think like that. Let this mind be in you. Why would he say that? Because it's not in us. <laughs> All right, so. Um, and then signs of beguiling, moved from the truth to truths, uh, denying the word of God, but still accepting the scriptures that declare all of the wonderful truths. Uh, 
and then misuse the word of God by leaving a part out. Okay. So what is the part that we leave out? It's him. It's him as a whole. You're, there's neither Greek nor Jew. Forget all that. Bond of free. Forget all that. Christ is all. And he's in all of you, so he needs to be all. But we, like Eve, the beguiling, well, I will eat this, and I will become something. And I will know. And I will... You know, and again, and Paul is going not to Eve, but to us, the Eve, the, the one that he's espousing right now. And he's saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't let, make him live through that again, but in the real way, not just the shadow land of Genesis 3. We leave out him, and that's why Colossians is the way it is. Again, not holding the head. Christ is it. Da 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 da. Even even Colossians three is where we get Christ is all and in all. You know, neither Greek nor Jew nor bond nor free. Every ounce of it, he is he is. Go it's almost like he's grabbing the arm of of new Eve that would be us, and going, no, 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 over here, here, look, look at him, look at him. And then she kind of goes off, like, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about Eve back then, I'm talking about us. And, and, and he's going, you know, I'm in great conflict over this because as the devil beguiled Eve, so your minds would be corrupted with the best of the best. That's what Hebrews is trying to refute too. The best of religion, the tabernacle, the priesthood, not, not that, no more, Jesus. What about this? No more, Jesus. What about this? No more, Jesus. Those were shadows. It's him. He even talks about shadows in Colossians here in this second chapter. And not holding the head and not, you know, it's always us straying from just saying, Mel meld me into you so that I am more aware of your heartbeat in me than I am aware of my own. Meld me into you so that my mind does not corrupt the flow of your mind in me. He's, he addresses all of these things. He does. Another verse that kind of goes along with that is John 5.39. You're familiar with it. Jesus says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and you will not come to me that you would have life. This is, this is sort of a cry on Jesus' heart. It's like a cry. You, you think by the scriptures, you think you have eternal life. You think that it's knowing this and being able to preach this and, and being able to put it in, in, in snappy outlines or, or charts or whatever, and that that's going to do it. And he says, no. No, search the scriptures. You do it, because this really does mean you search the scriptures. It means they're doing it already. You do it, but you do it because you think that in them, T-H-E-M, them, them, not a him, it always is going to come back to that. We'll say, well, I can see him go, well, we love the word of God and Jesus. We're not... You know, we're not out here robbing banks or murdering people or whatever. We're actually, you know, in the word and spending, you know, and he'd go, where, you know, and the father would go, where's my son? Where is my son? 
I don't care, you know, I don't care what you know. What, if what you know doesn't motivate you to life, then you're knowing it wrong. You're knowing it wrong. But you, and he ends that with, and you will not come to me that you might have life. They want to be patted on the back because they're seeking life. They're seeking God life. They're seeking God life in the scripture. Because Jesus said, that's what you're doing. You search the scriptures because in them you think you're, going, you're looking for life. But you will not come to me that you might have life. What does that mean? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ as your life. Not, not I, but Christ. That's what it means. And it, you know, that is so easily to wrap up in doctrinal truth and teaching and go, oh man, this is the best stuff I ever heard. But it's the worst stuff that Paul, he's, going, he's in great conflict over this. It's, it's the worst that the father could hear, you know. And it's breaking Jesus' heart. But you will not come to me that you might have life. You won't do it. You'll, you'll go to every, you know, what you consider beautiful book or teaching or whatever. And, and I know, I thank God for my, my years of being able to read good books and listen to good teaching. But I know that they don't, that doesn't mean anything if we're not listening or reading and going, ah, I must have Jesus here as my life. It, it has to be, I mean, you hear Jesus is crying, you won't come to me. We have to go, I'm coming. I'm coming. I want you. See, I want you because he is the life. So you, can, you don't go, I want you so that I'll have life. He is the life. You see what I mean? To say I want you so I can get life is already jumping the ship of him. I want you. And I believe that you are the life. You're the way. You're the resurrection. You're the truth. You're all of these things. But it's you that I want. And let what will be, be in me as a result of that, as a result of you. But may the Father say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased when he looks at us. We'll do one more verse here. Verse 7. Rooted and built up in him. See that? And established in the faith as you have been taught. Remember earlier he said that same thing? He's talking about as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord. In other words, the manner in which we told it to you, we said he'll be your life, not you'll eat something and then you'll get wise, you know, and, you know, you'll know everything like you should. Um, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. That means... That means I am going to abound in this reality that the mystery that God's been waiting to show us, we're living during that time, and we're not going to let it pass. Right. We are going to grab it, and we're going to be with you, Lord. Amen. You know, and that, that cry, and I was looking at it, and I thought, rooted and built up. Oh, glory to God. Rooted is a living thing yeah. rooted into I want to be rooted into you you know I want it to be a living connection where what is you flows through me and I can say 
that thought was him, not me. That action I just took is him, not me. That thing over there was not a miracle. That's him. That's everything that's going on here. I'm, I'm beginning to think that it's all Jesus, that it's all about Jesus, that, it's, that I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to settle for, you know. I, you know, I think one reason why we're so quick to, to anoint something as a miracle is because we have not yet come to the place where we believe that death really is the thing that will bring forth life. We haven't. We, there's no way that we could do that because if we did, if we fully believe that, then you wouldn't call something a miracle. You'd go, somebody must have died. Have you ever, over the years, have you ever seen me teaching something and then I would see something happen and I'd go, that didn't just happen. Somebody must have died. I, I did it, you know, in Africa when this revival broke out early, Reinhard Bonnke, do you remember that guy? Anyway, big revival and all that kind of stuff, and I said, it's not him. It's not him. You remember all this? I said, somebody must have died. <laughs> had to. It had to be. No, no, it's just a big miracle. It's just a big miracle, praise God. And we're all going to rejoice. And, and as long as you keep anointing it as a miracle, that miracle is going to go away. It's not going to come from life and keep flowing out from life. Oh, yeah, it did go away. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one did go away. <clears throat> so, you know, th so, you know, I remember resorting to different things and then, and then being confronted again by the Holy Spirit you know, you're avoiding death, and death is the only answer. So you can play around all you want. That's kind of the way he put it to him. You can play around all you want. You just, go ahead. Go ahead and play. But if you're ever going to come back to me, you're going to have to come to the reality that I, in my nature, this is me. Life comes out of death. This is the way I, this wasn't a one-time event on Calvary. This is your God. This is what he told me. You know, this is your God, and you're going to have to get with that eventually, or you'll just, never, you'll just never do it, and you'll go off and be that great evangelist you wanted to be when you were tw in your early 20s. Oh, God help me, you know. But man, to, to understand that, then all glory goes to Jesus. You, you, you understand that, don't you? I mean, you, you know, you say, well, when Jesus does a miracle, we give him all the glory too. But it's, it's all glory to the lamb, all glory to the true one that we should. It, didn't all glory go to the slaughtered lamb? You know, but now we're going to go, oh, but there's a little box over here and there's miracles in that. And so we go, oh, glory to God for that. You know, thank God it, that bo little box is in heaven. It's glowing because it's got little miracles in it. You know, and thank God for that too. All, all glory to you, all of it but this, you know. But the miracles, if it was just that, it's that done what's done by his hand, not by his nature. So I would cash mine in. <laughs> Cashing in my miracle. I'm trading my miracle. <laughs> Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'm sorry, I get stirred up. But you know, I know, I'm quitting. I'm quitting. But I'm, but I'm stirred up because Paul is stirred up. You know, because of his thing. I am in great conflict here. I see the living reality of Genesis 3 happening here. And she's not staying joined to the one, espoused to just one. She's being clouded with enticements and stuff and going off over here. And can you, can you see that he recognizes that? And he's, and he's going with that. Whatever that was, this is way worse. 
And he's doing everything he can. I mean, it's great conflict for him because he knows where we ought to be and he sees what's not happening. And it just moves him and it moves him strong. So let me uh, do my little thing here. Y'all don't mind if next time I come back to this rooted and built up, will you? Rooted. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I just see, well, what I see is that in Paul's mind, which is the mind of Christ, I see that, I see everything. I mean, I, I can understand it just being that way in Christ, but I can see it flowing in Paul's mind, and I see it like a river, and it always goes right to Jesus. I mean, it's like flowing and dun, 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 and then and it goes down and then once you connect that in his mind oh my god this connects in and, and oh this is and he's seeing the big picture and he's going we got to get jesus people <laughs> we need to get jesus father we ask you to bless your son and all that is within him And may we be espoused to one and not worry about all the riches that's in him or all the wisdom and knowledge that's in him or all the treasures that's in him. But let us love him with all of our heart and all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength, all of all that we have, let all that is within me love him. We ask in your name, Father, in Jesus' name also. Amen.